Hello YouTube, I'd like to talk about uh, Potosi Correctional Center. First of all, excuse the surroundings here, we're getting ready to put up the drywall. So there might be a little bit of an echo because there's nothing in here. Next, I need you to hit that subscribe, hit that like, notification bell, all that. Share this video if you like it. And please comment because uh, I always try to answer all the comments. All right, let's go to Potosi. Potosi is a punishment camp. I think I said this in another video, and you usually do nine months when you get sent there, sent there for doing uh, something in another camp. It uh, also holds capital punishment. They don't call them death row anymore because they're out in general population. The craziest thing. But uh, they don't do the executions there no more. Because the guards were getting upset because they said they was getting to know some of the prisoners and then they being executed, you know. So they hold them in Potosi, but they take them to Bonterra, another prison, to execute them. All because the CO is feeling bad. Yet, if, uh, like one time, a uh, Officer died during a motorcycle wreck, and they tried to pass out black ribbons. I wouldn't take one out of principle because they they don't wear black ribbons when the prisoners being executed. You know, plus it's the badge convict thing. You know. Anyway, when you they take you to Potosi. It's out in the middle of the country, a small town. It's, it's out in the middle of the country, away from the town, surrounded by woods, and it's on a hill. You can kind of look down if you're on the yard and see these fields and stuff. But they drive you into this tunnel, and the uh, gate closes behind you, and they have you give out and uh, put your hands against the wall. They pat you down and all that, and they talk crazy to you, you know. And uh, then they take you to the hole, because that's usually where you're going. You know, if you're there for disciplinary action from another prison, you're going to the hole here. And uh, the thing of it is, they had these two officers there and go. Like to torment the prisoners, harass them. And while they was at recreation, they'd go in and as if they're searching and put razor blades and stuff in there. And then when you come back from recreation, they'll come and say, you need to do a cell search, and then they'll find this razor blade. So I think they finally got caught doing that. You know, a lot of people was following on that. But anyway, you're doing your nine months in the hole, and it's a step-up program. You uh, you go to an, another wing in another house where you get a little bit more freedom. You, you get your property, basically. And you, I think you get out for like an hour in the wing. And after you're there for a couple months, they put you in the other wing of the housing unit. All the housing units only have two wings. You get a little bit more wreck and stuff, you know. And you finally work your way up to population. They got two housing units that's in population. There's only six housing units in the whole prison. 800 uh, prisoners. And um, I say prisoners because I don't like the word inmate. Although some prisoners are inmates, and uh, I don't use convict because um, there are some prisoners that are not convicts. It's just simple as that. And uh, you guys, 
I'm sure you know the differences. But anyway, six houses population, and even there, one side has more recreation than the, the, the other one, you know, gets to go to the yard more. And then five houses, the honor house, and that's where they had video games and stuff until Matt Blunt, the governor, decided to take them out. Said it was a punishment camp and we did not need to be uh, enjoying ourselves playing video games. They also had video games in the, in the gym. But, he, you know, he said, uh, my kids play video games all day. And now we got prisoners doing it. Your kids probably watch TV too. You gonna take the TVs away? You know what you're saying didn't make sense. And uh, but six house was the owner house. And the weird thing about Potosi is if all the housing units and the medical and all this and all they're all connected. And on one side they had the two in population, on the other side they had the whole, which is like you had the uh, housing unit for those with mental problems. You had three houses, which was the whole. Two houses, which was PC. And then one house was uh, long-term segregation. And they, they spent a year or more there. And they're usually getting in trouble there. My first... Uh, Sally, when I got out to population to six house, was a guy that was scheduled to be executed. And I think I mentioned in another video where I told him that, you know, what's to stop you from waking up one day and deciding that, you know, you're going to die anyway, so you might as well take as many out as you can. Guess who you see first? And, uh, but he said that everybody on that was scheduled for execution was medicated and they give them meds and that they was more laid back than those of us with life sentences and that, which you come to find out that ended up being true you know my second so i had there that was a, a capital punishment or cp he had three of them three death penalties on him. And he seemed to be under the illusion that he was going to beat him. If I remember correctly reading after I got out, I don't, I don't think he won, you know, I think they executed him. But, you know, I, I told him, I said, I wish you the best of luck on that, but don't you think your uh, chances are Slim, and uh, he said, uh, "Well, yeah, but he thought he had evidence to, to at least overturn the death penalty, you know, and get it reduced." But when I was in six house, they brought this guy in from um, uh, Pacific. Pacific is a lower level camp. And the reason they brought him in was because he had tried escaping from Pacific, him and I think a couple of others. And uh, he said that this female guard that was in the tower shot one warning shot and then shot him through the, the stomach area, you know, through the back, came out the stomach. And I probably shouldn't have said what I was, I'm getting ready to tell you I said, but he said um, they had to replace a, a portion of his intestine, you know, that is plastic. So I tell him, I said, well, I bet you there's one thing for sure. And he said, what's that? I said, you won't have the guts to do that again. Well, yeah. And, you know, people around there, they laugh about it, you know. But he, and he, he could just kind of give a short chuckle, but he, he said, man, that's really messed up, you know. And he, you're asshole you know if I said something wrong 
hit me in my shit. My lips not bleeding. I just checked. But uh, <laughs> I couldn't help but say that. And, I, and you know, I think about that sometimes. I probably shouldn't have said that. It was probably out of line. And then there was this guy that uh, I used to work out with. And uh, he had escaped from Georgia with another guy and then broke into a house and tied some people up. And then they made their way to Missouri and they had a shootout with the cops. And they was in this trailer. And uh, one day, one of these old heads came to me and said, Hard, let me talk to you a minute. He said, your buddy over there, he's a rat. And I said, oh yeah? He said, yeah, he uh, gave evidence against his uh, partner. I said, well, he said he was doing all the shooting in the house and, and you know, that trailer and that they, because uh, his partner was injured. He goes, no, his partner was doing the shooting and he had a white shirt stuck out waving it like it's a surrender. He says, uh, don't do anything right now. He said, don't say anything to him. Just act on like you're still messing with him, you know, rocking with him. <clears throat> he says, my friend and partner in Jeff City knows that his partner is he's gonna send uh, all the information. And sure enough, he did. So, me and the dude, we go over to him, and we said, "Hey, uh, you," uh, I said, "You told me that you uh, was the one shooting in that trailer, and that your partner was injured." And uh, he said, "Yeah, that's true." I said. Now how come he's saying something else, you know? He goes, I don't know. I said, in fact, you need to read this. And so we showed him the paperwork, right? And he goes, oh, I said, man, dude, just, just stop, you know? So I just walked away. The old head, he tells him, he says, uh, you need to go to the PC, you know? And we can't. You know, we can't have you out here. So I guess he did. But then there was this other guy that was, uh, nobody checked his paperwork. He, he just, he didn't have that look, you know what I mean? Some people have those cases and they have this particular look. And, and he didn't have this look, so nobody, you know, he, claim to hate those of those cases but uh, he kept going on about people like that I mean over and over that's all he talked about all day so one of two things is happening here either something happened to his a child in his family or he's lying and he is one so One of the guys that I worked out with got suspicious and had his uh, family look him up. You know, back then, they had to send the information out and they had to look him up. So they come back, yeah, he was a, had one of those cases. Well, if he goes to PC. At one time, there's another story that I couldn't figure it out for nothing. And uh, I was almost about ready to blame the guy I was smoking with. You know, I went out to the yard to work out and this guy that I worked out with, he said, man, let's work out later, man. He said, I wanna, I wanna smoke one. He said, let's go smoke one. I said, okay. So 
we went to this bench as far away from everybody as we could get and we smoked this joint. And we was talking about what we was sitting there, you know, and how good it was, you know, that wasn't bad. And that night, I got dropped on. I mean, they came by around midnight, told me to piss for them, piss in a little container, you know. Not that I was really going to piss for him anyway, but I couldn't because this guy had his face right down there where my three piece was at. I told him, I can't do this with you that close, dude. He goes, well, I'm just making sure because some people run a tube from the bottle along the penis and it's got somebody else's urine in I said, you want me to just lift everything so you can check? You know, what the hell's wrong with you? But anyway, they give you two hours to uh, do it, and, and I didn't, and what I didn't know was that's the same as dirty. That means not only am I going to the hole, I have to go through this drug thing, you know, the old drug class. But I got extremely lucky in that the caseworker, I don't know whether intentionally or on accident, forgot to team me. So I get to arguing with uh, the guy I smoked with. I said, man, you and I were the only ones that are. Who'd you tell about it, you know? Or did you say something? He said, man, I didn't say nothing. I said, it's not making any sense. And uh, he said, well, I got dropped on too, same night you did. And uh, he ended up going to the hole and he got teamed up. And uh, I said, well, something ain't right, you know? So one night, well, it wasn't night, it was in the evening. This guard was escorting me over to the uh, the other side to where medical and stuff was at. And this guard in this tower that's in the center of the prison leans out with what looks like a like a microphone like thing, like like a bullhorn. Like I said, I said, see, I said, what the hell is she doing? Aiming that thing at us. And he goes. She's listening to our conversation. I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, people on the yard, we listen to the conversation all the time. And then it hit me. And that's how they found out. We was over sitting, smoking that, passing it back and forth. They probably saw us passing it back and forth. And they, uh, they aimed that thing at us and so what we was uh, talking about. So I went and told a few other guys, they said, yeah, we already knew that, you know? You're an idiot if you're talking out there in the yard about something you're not supposed to be talking about. So I said, well, I didn't know. And uh, anyway, that's about all I have for you today. You know, about Potosi. Oh, the visiting room. On the visiting room, your most visiting rooms in most prisons, at least in Missouri, are on the edge of the prison, you know, at the edge. This in here is in the center. Like I, I told you before, all the buildings are connected. So, your people come in, they go up, they kind of go across and then they come down and they're in the middle of the prison. But everything's electronic, you know, you just can't open the door and walk in or anything, you know. Um, even in the visiting room, bathroom, you know, somebody, like a visitor uses the bathroom, they gotta hit this button and then wait for the, the 
people in the bubble of the visiting room click the door so they can get back out. It's, it's really, and all doors like that throughout Potosi is like that. Everywhere you go, you gotta hit, hit this button, let them let you in. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you again Friday. Bye.